Hello and welcome to this third episode in our series on depression. In this episode, we will be posing questions regarding treatment of depression to our expert. Come, let us meet our expert. Not all people who experience sadness would require treatment. For example, most of us experience sadness in response to common day-to-day -day life events. Depression requires treatment only when it is sustained for a period of at least two weeks, causing substantial dysfunction in the individual's performance of day-to-day -day activities, or if the individual develops significant suicidal thoughts, or if the individual develops significant disturbances in sleep and appetite, causing a substantial dysfunction in the individual's life. People who experience repeated episodes of depression would also require treatment. Depression causes substantial dysfunction in an individual's life. It can also substantially increase the risk of mortality. For example, about 30% of individuals suffering from depression attempt to commit suicide at some point of time or the other in their lives. About 15% of individuals end up committing suicide. Moreover, depression is a recurrent disorder. People with depression tend to have recurrent episodes of the disorder and so therefore it is important to prevent these recurrences for the particular individual. So depression is commonly treated by a combination of medical, psychological and social interventions along with lifestyle modifications. People who suffer from milder forms of the disorder may only require psychological, social interventions along with lifestyle modifications. However, those who suffer from a moderate or severe degree of severity of the illness would require medical interventions. Medicines used for treatment of depression commonly act on brain neurochemicals such as serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, glutamate, etc. and their receptors in the brain and cause positive changes in mood, thinking, behavior and other symptoms of depression. Some of the most commonly used antidepressant medications belong to the drug classes such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressants, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors and so on. The duration of treatment for depression depends on several factors such as the severity of the episode, the risk of suicide during the episode, the extent of dysfunction during the episode or the frequency of the episodes. Typically for a first episode of depression, the treatment would last anywhere between 6 months to up to 2 years. In case of recurrent episodes of depression, the treatment may range from several years to up to lifelong depending upon the severity and the frequency of the episodes. Like medicines for any other medical condition, antidepressant medications may also have potential side effects in a given individual. A majority of individuals started on antidepressants tolerate these medicines very well. The side effects may vary from individual to individual based on their genetic predisposition, their physical condition or their medical status. Depending upon the class of medicines used, the side effects may vary from giddiness, drowsiness, gastric discomfort, transient worsening of anxiety symptoms, cardiac side effects, sexual dysfunction and so on. A certain class of medications called as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors have been reported to increase the suicidal risk at least initially during the course of treatment. So therefore 
This would require monitoring of the suicidal risk of the patient during the initial phases of treatment with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So research into medical management of depression over the past several decades have led to discovery of new molecules with different mechanisms of action on the various neurochemicals and their brain receptors. So these research endeavors have led to introduction of newer drugs with fewer side effects and better tolerance. Recently, a medication known as ketamine which is primarily an anesthetic agent, has been shown to have a rapid antidepressant property when used in sub-anesthetic doses in individuals who have not responded to treatment with conventional antidepressant medications. This concludes our episode on treatment options for depression. In this episode, we learnt about different treatment options, specifically about medications, their mode of action, side effects and recent advances. We will be back with our next episode. Namaste.